Let me remind you before I forget about this Thursday being the National Day of Prayer. Just encourage you, I'm not sure exactly what all you have in this area, but just find a place and gather together at noon on that day. It will be very, very important that we just make a point to let the world know that we know the answer uh, to our problem. We know the solution is found with God's people on our knees before the Lord. So let me encourage you to be sure and do that. If you would take a Bible now and turn to Ephesians chapter 4, give you a moment to find that. Ephesians chapter 4, we'll be looking at verses 17 through 32, looking out at some of those. I want to just ask you a couple of questions. Last Sunday, a little survey, how many of you wore something new to church last Sunday? Yeah, because it was Easter Sunday. How many of you, you know, you spend extra time looking your best? How many of you, if you had a job interview in the morning, would maybe make extra time to look your best and to be dressed for success? Now, all of us work at those things different. Example, Cameron, come stand with me for a minute. Come on up here. I, I'm, and, and come on up here. Now, now let, let's, I, I think I know the answer to this, but stand right here. Just, you look so nice, I want you to know. Now, just stand there. Brett. How much time does Cameron spend getting this ready? For I mean, I figure like maybe if you get up at 6, he gets up at 4.30 to start this. Is that, because he wants to be dressed for success, right? But see, I can't do that. Thank you, bud. I, I, can't, I can't, you know, I can't do it up here. And, I can't do it up here. But now, there is something in Gail, you know, I want to be dressed for success. And so there's something that I do. I try my best to make sure that my socks match what I, yeah, I mean, and, and, and Gail will tell you, and there are times that I'll take all the socks and throw them on the bed, and then I'll get my phone and turn the flashlight on, because I'm colorblind half the time. And I'll shine the light on the socks and put the shirt. Because I want to be dressed for success. And it depends on what you're doing. You know, if I'm, well, maybe I'm going to speak, I want to be dressed for success. Now in the morning, if everything works out well, I am going to play golf. I'm not wearing this to play golf. I'm going, to do, I'm going to do something that's very important. If you play golf, you understand this. Until I hit the golf ball, people looking will think I'm a golfer. Because <laughs> I will be dressed for success. I may even have on my, my tiger outfit. I may have on black and red. You know, I really look like I... And, and so it's important to be dressed for success. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you spiritually dressed for success today? Sometimes we'll say, I just don't understand how come God's not blessing my life. How come God's not blessing the church? It seems like my prayers stop at the ceiling. Well, could it be that you and I are so focused on making sure our, our beard looks good and making sure our socks match and making sure we're dressed for success and whatever we're about to do that we've overlooked the most important aspect of our appearance and that's being dressed for spiritual success. Well, Paul writes to the church in Ephesus and addresses this issue. Let me ask you to stand, if you would, in reverence to the reading of God's Word. I'll be reading New American Standard. I think on the screen you'll have New King James. You'll, you'll, you'll know what we're talking about. If you look there, beginning in verse 17, chapter 4, book of Ephesians. This I say, therefore, and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer, just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their mind being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard Him and have been taught in Him, just as truth as in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of the sea, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness and of truth. Therefore, 
laying aside falsehood. Speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not give the devil an opportunity. Let him who steals steal no longer, but rather let him labor, performing with his own hands what is good, in order that he may have something to share with him who has need. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, according to the need of the moment, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Thank you, and be seated if you would. In verse 24, it talks about putting on the new self. So let's put on some new things. Let's make sure we're dressed for success today. Three things to think about. First, if I'm going to get ready, if I'm going to get dressed right, I'm going to make sure I'm sort of cleaned up. We need to be stripped of the soil things that might be in our life. It talks about three of these things I want to talk about today. One is be stripped of an egotistical mind. In verse 17, it says, Thus I say, therefore, and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer, just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their mind. Friends, we need to come today to make sure we're dressed for success in our spiritual life by being stripped of the soiled, egotistical minds that we have. That say these words, we know best. Let's just be blunt. Friends, if we know best, how come we're in the mess we're in? I mean, if we're so smart, how come things are so messed up? And even in the life of our churches, and in our own spiritual life, we'll say these things, Lord, I've got this one. Hey, Lord, I don't need you on this one. I know best what to do. I challenge us today, as we look ahead for what God has in store, to make sure that we're dressed for spiritual success, to get rid of an egotistical mind, a mind of futility, a mind at the end of the day is filled with confusion and only ask for, seek for the mind of Christ. Friends, this church on this corner has had a foundation laid for a number of years to focus the mind on being what God would have it to be. And I challenge you to make sure that we do not allow the devil in these days of change and transition to stir up and go, you know, now that I've got a moment, now that I can say this, now that I've got... Let me tell you what I think. Friends, let's make sure that what we share, what we do, what we think, what we say is not from an egotistical mind. It's from a mind of Christ. We need to get rid of and strip of this soiled egotistical mind. But also we need to strip our lives of a blind and dark heart. Look at verses 18 and 19 again. Being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. We need to get rid of a blind and dark heart. Oh, it's so sad to look at day after day as we read and see all the things happening in our nation. Those who seem to celebrate having a blind and dark heart. <laughs> Friends, you and I as the Christians need to make sure that wherever we go, whether it be at work or at school or on vacation in the next couple of months, whatever we're doing, that people see us and go, you know, there is something different about you. There's something different about the way you see things and the way you deal with things. It's because I've let my mind be the mind of Christ and I've let my eyes see as Christ sees and I've let my heart be as Christ would have it to be, which is clean. See, if you're here today without Christ as your Savior, your heart is hardened and callous and dark and dirty. You know, preacher, that's not, that's not very nice. But it's the truth. But praise God, in a moment you can be cleaned and changed and transformed if you'll just ask Christ to come in and forgive you of your sins and give you this new heart and new mind. But we need to get rid of it. 
Let me ask the wives a question. Does your husband, somewhere in the deep crevices of a closet, have a shirt that you've asked him to throw away for years, but yet he keeps wearing it? Raise your... No, no, that's all right. Don't, don't. And when, when, when you say it to him, as he puts it on again, he says these words, but it feels so good. And it fits so good. And then you're nice and you don't go, yes, it fit 25 years ago. <laughs> well, friends, I'm afraid that just like we have that shirt in the back that it doesn't look the best, but, but it, it just feels good. We've got some things in our life that we know aren't right, but they just feel so good. I mean, it's just always been me. And so, you know, and I just can't... Friends, if we expect God to bless in the way that He wants to, we expect revival to break forth in our churches, in our communities, and around the world, we must strip our lives of egotistical minds and of blind and dark hearts. But then there's the third thing I want you to hear carefully. We must strip our minds, strip our minds, strip our hearts, and also strip this soiled, corrupt tongue. Look at verse 22. And put on the new, new itself, new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness, holiness, and truth. Verse 22, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. Friends, we need to do away with a soiled, corrupt tongue that is filled with deceit. We've created a society that somehow or another almost praises if you can lie with a straight face. And if we're not careful even in our own spiritual life, we try to lie to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <coughs> oh, but Lord, you know this is what I do for you. Oh, Lord, you know this is who I am. Lord, I, 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 I've been in church. I, I haven't missed Sunday school in this many years. I, I give to the offering. I, I, I'm going on this effort. I'm involved in the camps. I know you're promoting some camps coming up. I'm going as a counselor. Friends, we may make sure that we've done away with a corrupt, deceitful tongue. And what we say here and what we say there are the same thing. And I try to practice this. If you can't stand in this pulpit and say it here, you shouldn't say it there. Oh, well, you don't live in the real world, you know, Brother Larry. You, you know, you're in that preachery world. You know, you're not with real people. That just imagine if you and I, no matter what, tomorrow when your boss comes in and lays pounds of work on your desk and calls you everything but nice, and then he walks out, and your and your coworkers are watching. Go, yeah, watch his Christianity now. Yeah, watch him now. See what he's going to say, and you just go about your business. You say, yes, sir, I'll take care of that. Friends, we, it matters what we say. And it matters how we say it. I mean, it matters. And even in the church, it matters what we say. And it matters how we say it. I encourage you to make sure that what we say is always the truth. And always right that what God would have us to say. Well, we're going to be stripped of our soiled, egotistical mind, a blind and dark heart, and a corrupt tongue. Well, then what are we going to do? After I've got cleaned up, I'm going to shod myself in the saintly. I'm going to put on some saintly things. Well, addressing these three issues. First, we need to put on a righteous mind, verses 23 and 24, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness and of truth. The renewed spirit of your mind. We need to put on a saintly, righteous mind. And we need to feed that mind. How do we do so? We read God's Word. And we come to Sunday school. Or whatever we call it. You know, we, we, we've managed to call it so many things. Sometimes I get confused at all the different churches. I'm not sure what we're going to call it. But bottom line, you need to be in Bible study. Whether it be here, or at home group, or whatever. Riding down the road. Or listen, you need to be involved in Bible study that you might have a righteous 
mind that you will respond to things with the mind of Christ. You need to know God's Word. Some of you are baseball fans. Some of you are football fans. Some of, we're all fans of something. And we know about that. You know, the draft. You, you probably know who all your team drafted and who they should have drafted and who, you know, you, you're into all that. and You know the thing. Let me ask you a question. How much time do we spend helping our minds be a righteous, holy, godly place? And... and what do you think about when you're all alone? When you're driving that hour or two. I had to go to Atlanta or to Duluth this week to the uh, Georgia Baptist Mission Board office and, and was in a meeting. Quick time, I left Wednesday, Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock. Drove all day to be in a meeting from 2 to 4. Spent the night, got in the car and drove back the next day. I had a lot of time on the road to think. But if we're not careful, when we've got time to think, our mind goes places it shouldn't go. We won't ask you to raise your hand on that one, but our mind goes places it shouldn't go. If we all of a sudden just picked on someone and said, you, now we're going to play everything you thought about the last two hours and put it on the screen, would you be okay? Or would you have to maybe quickly leave because you, you know, somebody was calling you and you needed to go someplace? We need to make sure we have a righteous mind. That God might use us. But also, we need to be shot in a saintliness of a righteous mind and a compassionate heart. Verse 26. Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let sun go down on your anger. Friends, we need to have a compassionate heart. Let's just be honest. Sometimes we're just hard. We're just meek. Well, I've, I've been taken advantage of. We all have. There are people that, you know, I, I may have told you, I've, I've made it before, over all these years of ministry, I've tried to help people, help people, and help people, and help people, and all I've ever asked is, look, when you get to that place that you needed that gas for, or when you get things better, oh, just give me a call and say you made it. I'm waiting for the first call. Amen. But we still must be compassionate. Now we have to be wise and be smart, I understand that, but a heart of, com of compassion. And in the life of the church, a heart of compassion. Somebody comes up here and they sing. Mike has asked a person to come up and sing. And they come up here and they're shaking and trembling and, and they forget their words. And maybe the, they have to start the, the, the CD a couple of times. And, and, and when they get done, and, and when you see them after church, this is an American idol. <laughs> Your job is not to go, well, I'll tell you one thing, you're the awfulest. No, 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 I can't believe you got up, no, no, no. You're to have a compassionate heart. And say, man, I, I appreciate the fact you were willing to share and to use your abilities and to, and to bring us a message in song. A heart of compassion. Oh, people in church are interesting. Yeah. Pastor, I want you to know, here's the three grammatical errors you used in the message. Okay, so I preached for 40 minutes and all you got out of it was I said the wrong thing three times. I mean, what? What, what is that? <laughs> Compassion. Compassion. Oh, but, you know, we, we, we things are hard. You've got to be right. You've got to be... I didn't say don't do things our best. But a heart of compassion. Don't let me go further. That means every man and woman, boy and girl that you know, you need to be concerned about do they know Jesus as their Savior. Oh, but there's plenty of churches. That's true. And they know where they are. Probably so. And, and, and if they wanted to come, and if they wanted to hear, they... That, but friends, know A heart of compassion. To make that point to go out and catch them when they're in the yard. And say, hey, I just want to remind you. And be sure once you come to church with me next week. Or hey, and let me talk to you about this. Or hey, we're having a camp. Having some for our kids. Well, just a heart of compassion is how God wants us to be. So shot in this saintliness of a righteous mind and a compassionate heart, but also a truthful tongue. Verse 25. Therefore laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Verse 29. Let no one wholesome word proceed from your mouth, though in such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment, that it may give grace to those who hear a truthful tongue. Some of you teach Sunday school. I know you do. I encourage you when you get before that class to make sure you study and you're prepared 
and you share with a truthful tongue. Thus saith the Lord. Now sometimes it's easy to go, thus saith the Lord. But sometimes the verses hit you square between the eyes. If we're not tempted, we're going to go, well now, I know what it says, but this is what I think. Back up. I know what it says. And let me just tell you. A truthful tongue about God's Word. See, our, our society believes this. Let's be, they believe this. Well, all faiths are the same. All, all leaders are the same. All religions are the same. All gods are the same. All roads lead to heaven. That is a lie. But if we're not careful because we want to fit in, we'll go, well, okay. You know, if you're happy over there, I hope it works out for you. No, no. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. You finish it with me. And no man comes to the Father. How? But by me. Didn't say I'm one of many or it's a multiple choice question or you just, no. Friends, you and I need to have a truthful tongue. Preaching, I'll be... Pastoring and preaching has become harder and harder and harder because as the Bible says in the latter days, people don't want to hear the truth. We can fill this church up in two weeks. We can have people lined up all the way to the interstate to get here. Just say nice things that people want to hear. And they'll come. Oh, we're glad you're here today. Oh, you know, everything's hunky dory, life's grand, and do what you want to. Amen. Put some money in the plate. Bye bye. We'll see you next week. <laughs> and they get in the car and go, Ooh, I went to church. Boy, it was great. What'd you hear? Uh, I heard I was great. <laughs> I heard I'm okay. Man, I love that guy. He's good. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing when you get up to preach the Word of God, that says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When you preach that there are things that we as believers in Christ should not do and should not say, it's amazing how all of a sudden those very same people get busy. Friends, it's time for us as God's people to be dressed for success, being stripped of these things that are soiled in our life, shot in the things that are saintly that God would have us to, and thus will be sealed by the Spirit. Amen. Now, you know what sealed means. Sealed is when your wife hands you that jar and says, Honey, can you open it? <laughs> and then when you open it, she says, And I, I loosened it for you. Yes. Yeah. Sealed. I've decided that some manufacturers, their goal is to make you so mad with what you bought, you want to throw it away and go buy something else. Because you can't get in it. It's amazing. I mean, I, I, bought, uh, I bought something uh, yesterday, and I, I had to get a knife and get this other and get some other and clip this and clip that, just to get it out. It was sealed. Well, guess what? The Bible says, as a child of God, I'm sealed. I am sealed. It says, I am sealed by the Spirit with the redeemed mind. In verse 30. Verse 30, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Friends, when I was saved, I was saved. And it was settled. And I was sealed. And my name was written in the Lamb's book of God. And, and, and I want you to understand that nothing will separate me. I've been sealed. I didn't say I was perfect. You go, man, I saw you the other day. I saw how you acted. I, well, I didn't talk with no. All I know is when it's all said and done, I've been sealed because when I was nine years old, in 1264 Dyer, I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart and be my son. And I was sealed. And friends, you and I need to act like somebody that's sealed. It's settled. It's done. Well, I hope I'm saved. I, 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 love, I used to be saved. No, then you weren't saved. Well, I was saved last week, but then I messed up, so I'm not saved today. Then no, no, you weren't saved. <coughs> Friends, when I was saved, it was settled and it was done. And because of that, you can rejoice and be excited and have confidence. So we need to find ourselves dressed for success by being sealed, being sealed by the Spirit with a redeemed mind, but then also, praise God, I've got a forgiven 
heart. Verse 32, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving each other, just as God and Christ also has forgiven you. Praise God, I've been forgiven. But notice what it says. I need to be forgiving because I've been forgiven. Church people have long memories. I was in a meeting, I told you I went to Atlanta, I was in a meeting with, with, with church uh, directors of missions all, all across the state, and there's some changes taking place in the leadership and the organizational chart, we'll say, of the state, and it was obvious in that meeting, meeting that there's some, there's some guys got long memories. You know, well, I was done wrong back in 1987, you know, and I ain't know. We need to have a forgiving heart. The church people are interesting. And I've gone, and you go and you, you call a new pastor of the church and some couple takes you out for lunch. And, and I've had, this happened. I mean, I'm serious. I won't say which church, but this happened. And they cut me out to lunch. And, and we sat there and the lady took out a piece of paper. And she said, now pastor, these are the names of the people that you need to get rid of in the life of the church. Because they have hurt me. And my last week there, <laughs> the same family carried me out to lunch and said these words. We're so glad you're leaving because you didn't get rid of these people. <laughs> that hurt me. You go, you're making that up. I'm not. I'll tell you the church and the, I know exactly where it was and what happened. But anyhow, friends, the point is, we've got to have a forgiving heart. We as a church must move on. I'm not saying we weren't hurt. I understand it matters not if I meant to hurt you or not. If I say something in the message that hurts Mike's feelings, I didn't mean it, but if it hurts his feelings, he's hurt. And I need to address the fact that he's hurt. Now I may have to go, man, Mike, I'm sorry. I understand you're upset, and I didn't mean to. And I may get in the car and go, that's the goofiest conversation I've had in my life. I don't know why Mike was upset. You know, I mean, I know he was mad because I called Cameron up and not him. I'm sorry, I man. I'll bring him up. I mean, I. But the point is, I've got to help understand and be forgiven that God might bless. Sealed by the Spirit with a redeemed mind and forgiven heart. Oh, and also a tender tongue. Verse 31. I want you to hear this. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Wow. Amen. Man. You think, you think Paul meant that when he, when he, when he penned that? As far as I got? <laughs> it's pretty clear what? He didn't like go, well, just talk nice. No, he was pretty clear. Friends, just imagine a tender tongue. Imagine in the politics of our country a tender tongue. Imagine in some of the business meetings and some of our churches a tender tongue. Imagine, even if we disagree, a tender tongue. The world is looking for a place filled with people with a tender tongue. Now notice, we've already said, it's a truthful tongue. Okay? It's a truthful tongue. But it's a tender tongue. Because it says this, the Lord's Word, the Bible, says this is wrong. And I love you so much. I want to help you understand how to get through that. That's a tender tongue. Friends, are you dressed for spiritual success today? Because you made a point to look good today. Odds are you did not Set your clock with five minutes to go. Roll out of the bed. Grab whatever was on the floor from two days ago. Throw it on and get in your car and come to church. Odds are you did. Odds are. I'm looking around. No, but odds are. Odds are. You, you made a point to look good. In the morning, going to school or going to work, you want to look good. How do you look today when the Lord looks at us? How, how do I, I look? Well, we can take care of that. 
Just like you may, you know, discard that shirt finally and get rid of it because it doesn't fit and it doesn't look good. Well, you can, you can get rid of these things. How? You need to repent of your sins and put your faith and trust in Christ and forgive you of your sins and ask Him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. And if you've already done that, you need to be obedient. Maybe obedient by making it public and coming and sharing with us, hey, I, I, I've asked you to be my Savior. Maybe being obedient by, by getting baptized. The first act of obedience is, is baptism by immersion. You say, well, I'm, I'm saved. Yeah, but you're, you're living in disobedience. You need to get baptized. And then you, you need to unite with the church. Well, I'm, I come here. <clears throat> Friends, I mean, I'm going to just be honest with you. You need to get united so we can put you to work. I mean, I'm going to be straight up about it. I mean, you know, you need to join so we can put you to work. It's amazing what we do sometimes. But just imagine if we all came day after day from morning to night. We made sure, as we made sure we looked good, we made sure everything matched, we made sure everything was in place. We didn't walk out the door, but we made sure the spirits that we were dressed for success. Imagine the impact it would have at your school, at your workplace, with your group of friends that you maybe go shopping with or go on vacation with. Guys you play golf with. Guys you go to the deer stand and hunt with. Imagine the difference it would make. Well, today you can make that decision. The invitation is for you. Just to look over your own spiritual dress. Make sure you're good. If you're good, just thank the Lord and pray for everybody else. And pray that God help you continue to do what He wants you to do. If you're not right, I challenge you today to put away the soul. Put on the same. That you might live sealed in what God what have you to do. Let's bow for a moment. Lord, we thank you for the day. Thank you for these words inspired that Paul penned. Not just to the church at Ephesus, but to us today. Lord, I pray that not one person will leave here until they've examined their spiritual dress. And we'll all leave here shining for you. In Christ's name I pray.